We have all seen the stories about Antarctica and its secrets. Some say there is a whole world under it, maybe created by us, humans, maybe by aliens and maybe created by cooperation between humans and aliens. Whatever proof normal people like you and I, commonly called conspiracy theorists, find through Google Maps or simply by connecting dots from history, it seems like nobody really wants to argue with us and also do not prove the opposite. This leaves us with lots of questions and the idea that we will die not even with the slightest idea about what actually hides under the ice of Antarctica and what is Antarctica. My friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are excited about today's topic. I've been wanting to make videos about Antarctica and its secrets for a long time already. That's a topic that me and my husband been discussing quite often in our house and sometimes it keeps me awake during the night. Like the things that people are discovering on Google Maps, the things that are appearing there, like even abandoned tanks, possibly aliens, like ah! Oh. But one thing is common for all of these legend stories and whatever is happening there. It all brings us back to the point where Nazis started to do some shady stuff there in Antarctica. And this is also what we will be discussing in today's video. And mind you, apart from legends and stories and possibilities, I will show you proof, like a real document maps, that maybe will shed a little light on the things that are happening under the ice of Antarctica. And it will blow your mind. At least it blew my mind. We have to go back as far as year 1939, when Nazis decided to claim a land in Antarctica that actually belonged to Norway, and it was called Queen Maud's land. The territory that was occupied by Nazis was called New Schwabia or Neuschwabland. Uh, they gave the name according to the ship that took Nazis to Antarctica. The ship's name was Schwabland. And this expedition, this German Antarctic expedition, was led by a German Navy leader. His name was Alfred Richer. So the official purpose of this expedition was actually to create a whaling station for Germans to increase the fat production in their country. And uh, if you didn't know, then whale fat is actually very useful for creating soap, margarine and many other stuff. So that was the thing that they said to others why they are going there and taking this territory. But of course, we all know that things are not as we know. But with the approaching war and Hitler crawling on the stage, of course, Germans also started to check for some useful places to create German bases. And the first thing that comes in my mind is why the fuck you would go to Antarctica where it's ice and cold and create a base there? Well, as you remember, the official announcement was that they're going to create a whaling station. They didn't say that they're creating a base, but there must be some kind of reason to go particularly to Antarctica. So Germans arrived at Princess Martha coast on Queen Maud's land. They put a Nazi flag over there, started to chart the area. They did even aerial research, like they dropped Nazi flags all over the territory just to claim this territory. And the fun fact is that actually um, some of these flags have been found. Most of them are lost, but some of them were found. And afterwards they were sold in some like uh, expensive auctions for like millions of dollars. So if you happen to be in Antarctica and you find one of these Nazi flags, you might become a millionaire actually. <laughs> Norwegians of course were not happy about this visit, but Germany issued a decree about the establishment of a German Antarctic sector called New Schwabia after the expedition's return on the August of year 1939. For your information, Germany abandoned the area after year 1945 and never claimed the territory back, basically because Nazi Germany did not exist anymore. 
So there are many legends about what Nazis actually did there and what they found there. And one of those is that in the year 1938, one of the Nazi U-boats that was like researching the surrounding waters managed to like dive in quite deep and find somewhat like a tunnel or a cave under the water. And this U-boat managed to go inside this tunnel. And after a little trip in this tunnel, it managed to come on the surface. So if you understand me, they found like a surface where you can land on your feet beneath in the waters. And when they came out, allegedly, they realized that they're actually in a huge cave where you can like breathe and everything like normally. And this large cave is a part of a tunnel and cave system underneath the Antarctica's surface. And allegedly, also they found some signs of civilization down there, like obelisks, some drawings on the caves, you know what I mean. However, interestingly enough, exactly during the time from the year 1938 up to 1940, when allegedly all these discoveries were made, it is known that the most prominent Nazi geologists, glaciologists, hydrologists, quite often went on work trips also to several places in Latin America. Was this somehow related to Antarctica's discoveries? Now, this brings us to Agartha. If you haven't heard about Agartha theory, let me explain a little bit about it. So, Agartha theory is a part of the hollow Earth's theory, which means that people believe that there is a specific civilization or a land down there in the Earth's core. And many believe that that was actually what Nazis were after when they went to Antarctica. They had some information that probably there are some signs, there are some things that would show them that Agartha, it's real. So the general belief is that Agartha actually is somewhere in Tibet. And the believers think that Agartha is populated by some higher beings who are never seen by us humans, uh, but they somehow manage to influence the way how the history evolves for us up here on the top of the earth. Now, if you dig a little bit deeper, you can see that Agartha is nothing new. Many books mention and talk about it. But in general, the legend is that many, many years ago, uh, the Earth looked completely different. And for example, where Gobi Desert is located right now, in those times there was sea and in the sea, there was an island that was named White Island. And around this island, in that territory, this higher being civilization emerged. But then, according to the legend, the global cataclysm started and all of the civilization died out. Only a couple of representatives managed to escape in an underground cave system that was actually located under this White Island. And from these people, the civilization, us, on the surface of Earth emerged. Uh, but these people who were like the higher beings down in those caves, they basically stayed there and didn't intervene until part of these higher beings who were hiding down there in those caves decided that they would like to intervene with the lives of humans on, on the surface of the Earth. This created a dispute. So that part who wanted to interact with humans, they went up on the Earth and helped people and the rest of them stayed in the caves and just maintained their spiritual life, not intervening with anyone. So from here, I think we can go many wild ways. Like we can can speculate about the fact that maybe those higher beings coming from those caves were the ones who helped people to build pyramids and uh, probably those were the ones who created all of these uh, mysterious things that we cannot explain nowadays. We will not go down that rabbit hole. Uh, our main purpose is now to understand if this Agartha really could have existed and What's the relation with Nazis and Antarctica here? Bear with me, it's gonna get crazy. All of this would sound like a crazy legend fairy tale, nothing surprising until I'm gonna show you a real proof, real document, charts and maps that probably would prove that Agartha or whatever you call it existed. So in the possession of KGB, there is there was a folder called Orion and in this folder, 
they kept all the information they were collecting about Nazis and their activities before Second World War and during the Second World War. And this document, oh my God, it has the name Agartha itself on it and maps and crazy information. So here you see the document. It has map, it has charts, and it has some information in German. It says that 1,500 copies of it have been made, uh, which means that it has been distributed among certain people. And it says that it has been created in Dachau concentration camp in the year 1944. And all of these people who worked on creation of this map afterwards were killed so that nobody spreads the information further. And the document said, I quote, only for the captains of the submarines of the A class of the special convoy of the Führer. And the document actually has around nine points where everything is like nicely broken down, how a U-boat has to maneuver and swim and go so that it can pass easily through the rooms and corridors and end up in a Garda. Yeah, literally it says a Garda. Let me quote you the last point of this list. Proceed to a Garda, full speed. Proceed straight ahead until the new light can be seen. Change of magnetic poles, the changes of the compass needle and instruments are to be disregarded. Further instructions in package number three, only when arrived in a Garda to be opened. Bam! Like shock! Did they really write down a Garda? Like, oh my God, what is this map? What is this chart? Was, what are these instructions? Can this be now used as the proof that there actually is a Garda or at least a way that's connected to a Garda? Is it literally under Antarctica and did Nazis find it? Well, Let's look at this document for, from different angles and try to figure at least something out. This brings me to a Russian journalist, Nikolai Subotin. He did a very thorough work with all of these uh, declassified KGB documents dealing with the Garta and Nazi projects in Antarctica. So I watched a whole video where he literally had uh, the map on his table, maybe it was copy, whatever, and he was analyzing and talking about it. Um, I will link this video in the description box if you're interested, but he speaks in Russian and uh, the information is translated in German, so if you don't know the languages there will not be such a use of it. Since I understand Russian helped me a lot in this case. Let me just tell you what he said, and again I'm gonna repeat myself mind-blowing, okay? The first thing that Subotin noticed when he was looking at this document and the uh, instructions that were included there was the fact that the U-boat was supposed to go as deep as 400 meters down uh, in the waters, which is quite deep, considering that during that time the German Nazi U-boats could not go deeper than 250 meters. Like, the crush point or crush depth would be probably 280s, but nothing more. Nowadays, we probably, I certainly believe that we have U-boats that can go as deep as that, but the question remains, uh, did Germans have some kind of technology that we didn't know about and that they were using in those expeditions? That would probably be the first sign that this trip actually didn't happen since they didn't have the means for it, or maybe they had, we just don't know about it. They were keeping it a secret, which would also be logic. However, Subotin was consulting with some experts uh, in U-boats and they said that maybe there were a couple of U-boats that Germans had that could have done this kind of trip. And they were referring to specific U-boats called U-459. They were also commonly referred to as milk cows. However, when I did like very brief research on Google uh, about this milk cow, it said that it still cannot reach deeper than 250, 280 meters. So I don't know what's with that, but let's just leave that hanging and move on to like really shocking things. So we have to also look on this chart, which shows how the U-boat uh, is supposed to go through these tunnels deep in the water and then it is supposed to resurface on some kind of ground. So looking on this kind of 
chart that shows the ground where the U-boat is supposed to resurface, he assumed and speculated that this might be the well-known Lake Vostok because this ground actually a little bit resembles that of how it looks down there in Lake Vostok, although we don't know so much about it, but he assumed that that could probably be the place. For those who don't know, Lake Vostok, in brief, is a very notorious, very mysterious lake in Antarctica. Uh, it is a prehistoric lake that formed around 14 million years ago, so can you imagine how many secrets it has down there? Numerous scientific researches were made uh, with Lake Vostok. They are drilling the heck out of it. I don't know what they are wanting to find there down in Lake Vostok. But now we can probably assume that one of the options is also a Gartha or some kind of caves or tunnels related to this Nazi story. Like the official thing that of course they are using to explain why they are drilling and researching it so heavily is because they are trying to find some new microorganisms and whatever is down there and use it for some researches to understand uh, the history of our Earth. But let's be honest... I don't think that's the truth and that's why they're drilling the heck out of it. And in the year 2012, of course, they found some microorganisms down there. There were articles all, all over the place. And what is interesting, they also found some magnetic anomaly down there. And we don't know what is causing that. As far as I know, there is no real explanation for these anomalies they found in Lake Vostok. Some scientists think that this might be due to the Earth's crust thinning, but it may also signify a lost city hidden below the lake, you know? Mr. Subotin in his video also made another very good point. He said that if KGB had this information, then probably they would not just like sit on it, they would also go out there and test it and... I think they did it. So let's assume that Russians did really go to that place where Nazis supposedly found this uh, Agarda land and they find it. What would happen? Of course they would not tell because that's the human nature. You can see with everything that's happening right now in the world like aliens, uh, different mysteries, pyramids and stuff. When they find something, they never tell. They just probably give you some breadcrumbs, like to the public, to know that, yeah, some discoveries have been made. But to have the power and the knowledge and to be, like, prevailing over other countries and other people, they would probably not tell. So even if Russians went there and found the cave, found the tunnel, went down there, met another civilization saw those caves, they wouldn't probably tell. A valid point to consider also is the fact that even if this map is valid and it works and Russians went there and found the Garda, let's say 10 years or just a couple of years after they got hold of this map, the place years later would never look the same way. There is a simple reason for that. The profile of the depths of Antarctica changes constantly due to many reasons. One of them being, for example, climate changes. So even if, let's say, you or me got hold of this map, like you're, you just saw it on the screen, and you would be, let's say, rich, and you would decide to go on expedition and find this exact place where Nazis allegedly went into the tunnel and ended up in a garda, this would probably not work nowadays because the Earth is changing, Antarctica is changing. So there definitely has been a shift. So the entrance probably has also changed. So from this, we can understand that on the moment when KGB actually got hold of this map, probably it was not even working anymore. Uh, there was the information, kind of confirmation that Agartha exists. There is a tunnel. You can get there but the entrance was not there anymore. So Subotin, he assumed that probably Russians, if they tried to find the Garda, they tried to find another entrance to it. And I strongly believe that this happened because Subotin also pointed out that after the Second World War ended, Russians immediately moved to Schirmacher Oasis in Queen Maud's land, which is exactly the place where Nazi had their base, called New Schwabland. 
And so Russians moved to exactly the same place where New Schwabland's base was, and they call it Novolazarevske. It exists even nowadays. They have even managed to create like an airstrip for some planes to come, namely for the traveling of the researchers to this base. And they even somehow managed to create access to internet to their researchers. So that's a solid place. A lot of things are happening there. Maybe they're still looking for the entrance. I don't know. Let's now move to the most controversial part of this document namely the map. As you can see there on this map, there are two uh, kind of spheres, uh, like two parts of Earth, but actually it's not Earth. This is the map of how everything looks inside. So if we believe the hollow Earth theory, this is how this inside looks. That's the map of the inside. This is what Nazis saw when they entered the tunnel and ended up in a garda or this cave or underground land, call it whatever. On these spheres, on these maps, you can see that Nazis have marked uh, separate places where they had already managed to create uh, German Nazi bases. Can we believe I don't know, unless somebody actually finds it, comes out and tells that, yes, I was there and I saw that there are German bases down there and maybe something else, maybe even Russians, maybe they're having a party down there. As I mentioned at the beginning, it was a bit suspicious because like Nazis at one point were like, we have to go to Antarctica, we have to go right now. From where is this coming? Why did... They became so passionate about Antarctica. Yes, they said whaling station and stuff, but there was another reason behind it. But from where is this coming? Well, this brings us to a person named Ernst Schaffer. He was a German explorer, hunter and zoologist. Probably you have heard the name of Ernst Schaffer in relation to Anna Nerbe, a pseudo-scientific organization active in Nazi Germany and founded by Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. As we all know, Anna Nerbe was composed of scholars and scientists from a broad range of academic disciplines, among which was also Schaffer. So Schaffer goes on an experiment expedition to Tibet, supported by Himmler and SS. There they were looking for some Aryan heritage signs in Tibetan people. And the idea to go to Tibet and look for these Aryan signs in Tibetan people actually came from Hitler himself, because in the year 1920s he got hold of a book that was written by a mystic and the founder of Theosophy, Yelena Blavatskaya. And the book's name was Secret Doctrine. There, Blavatsky wrote that Aryans, from whom ancient Germans later came from during a global cataclysm, managed to successfully save themselves in Himalaya mountains. The idea of Germans coming from higher race soothed Hitler's ego, hence the expedition where he literally measured the bodies and heads of Tibetans to find some proof. When they came back from this expedition in Tibet, um, Schaffer was promoted I have to read this too, a position called Sturmbannführer SS. So, and he also got like a leading position in one of Anna Nerbe's departments. It is not known from where this sudden interest to Antarctica after this trip came to Nazis, but what is clear is that this crazy interest in Antarctica came together with Schaffer because that's where they headed after this Tibetan expedition. This is also the time when Nazis started to create these weird maps, like the one that we are discussing in today's video. So this makes me think that maybe when they went to Tibet, they learned something that made them immediately go back uh, and uh, start to prepare for the expedition on Antarctica. Maybe this is somehow related, you know, and I also mentioned that the general idea of where Agarda is located is Tibet, Himalayas. So all of this kind of makes sense. To understand how quick this switch to Antarctica was, let me just give you some numbers. So as you remember, in the year 1938 up to 39, there was this trip to Tibet, and from the year 1941 up to like 1942, Nazis already had these maps of the Earth's core, like the one that we are looking at in today's video. This happened like literally one after another. 
very quick. I know that you maybe are now asking where did the KGB got these documents? Uh, how do we know that they are real? Well, there is a historical fact. There was an organization called Smersh. So they managed to get into Nazi Germany's uh, Navy headquarters. They extracted all the documents and all the papers that they could. And among those were also these materials about uh, Nazis' explorations and Nazis' trips to Antarctica. So for your information, Smersh, which is the organization who stormed into Berlin and got all of these papers for KGB, was an umbrella organization for three independent counterintelligence agencies in the Red Army. It operated during the 1940s with the motto Death to Spies and was invented by Joseph Stalin to make sure no Germans infiltrate the Red Army. Why am I telling you? this just to make sure that you understand that these are real declassified documents from the KGB archives and among these documents there were like a lot of things and among those was a little notebook that Subotin also showed in the video. This notebook belonged to a German Nazi officer. His name was Wilhelm Wolf and this notebook dated back to the March uh, 1940. In this book, he was writing down all the recommendations, suggestions and orders from Hitler himself. Among the suggestions in this book were also things like uh, where Hitler uh, told uh, Wolf to make sure uh, when he was recruiting people for these Antarctica expeditions. So one of the main things that he had to make sure is when recruiting soldiers for this mission was that these people do not have any families and also he wanted him to make sure that those guys really understand that they are going away for good, they're not returning back, they're going to some place uh, without no return and they're doing this for the sake of Nazi Germany and to make a new world. Together with the notebook, there were also a couple of interesting photos with some people. So we might assume that on one of those photos there is uh, Herr Wolf himself. There are also some other people and at the back of one of those photos there were also uh, names and surnames of the people that you can see in those photos. I mean, it would be so interesting to get an access to some kind of archives and check those names just to make sure if they had disappeared and how their lives ended. I mean, that would be such an exciting journey. But the thing is that I guess it is quite safe to assume that all of these people in the pictures and also considering that the book was dealing mainly with recommendations of how to recruit people, this was the team that was recruiting soldiers for these missions down in the depths of Antarctica. From what I understood uh, in this video, uh, what Mr. Subotin said, he has plenty of these declassified documents and they have really crazy information on it. Nazis were up to a lot of things, but uh, as he said, he is not yet sharing this with the world. Basically, because probably it would cause some kind of chaos and misunderstanding. Because according to him, it contradicts with everything that we know now about or earth about the things happening around us so he said that he wants to make sure that these documents have undergone proper analysis uh, proper research and only then probably he will share them i'm really looking forward to this and i can certainly understand the point of view from which he is coming like if one day somebody comes out and tells that everything that you believe is not true, it's completely different, people would get crazy. Well, probably not me and you, because like you're watching my channel and you know that things are not the way they are, but most of the people, I don't know if they're ready for the truth, you know. So I will certainly continue digging in these uh, Russian materials that I have come across with. And I am pretty sure that there is going to be like a series dedicated to mysteries of Antarctica. I am hooked on this topic. I love it so much. So I hope you are really enjoying this content. And when I was doing this research, I found uh, another source that was... Uh, 
again referring to Subotin and uh, the documents that he's working with, the Nazi documents, and I just wanted to read you this quote. When you continue the way in the cave, there is a possibility of encountering both flying and underwater objects. It is forbidden to shoot on these objects. Okay. Now we can also draw some parallels with flying objects and underwater objects, like, you know, aliens flying and underwater. So many crazy things yet to understand and cover. And I'm so excited to share everything that I will find, everything that I will learn about this topic. And so guys, I will put the full stop here. It's a lot of information to process, at least it was for me while I was doing this research. Let me know what you are thinking about this. Do you believe that Nazis might have found a way to Agarda? Do you believe that Russians also managed to find it? Let me know in the comments, let's discuss it. This is like a never-ending topic. Anyways, I will let you digest this. <laughs> and I hope you're gonna put thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, press notification bell. Uh, please write comments and interact with me because it helps uh, the algorithm to push me further. Again, I'm struggling with my recognition on YouTube platform, but I know you can do this. We can do this. <laughs> Have a lovely day and see you next time.